some of the best artwork and some of the best hash. I know some of you like to talk shit if people have cool labels, but guess what? If there's good hash on the inside, you can't talk shit. Checks all the boxes. Absolutely. All right, welcome back. All right, go to one, we're gonna start. This is the actual episode now, okay? All that was just Patreon. This is it, ready? Welcome back to another Hot Dab Sessions. I'm your host, Hashavelli, joined as always by Dr. Darby, filmed live at Rosin Evo Studios in sunny San Diego. Today we have a very special episode for you guys because we have all the way from Michigan, just found out she's in the pinky of the mitten, Mrs. Baked Tater. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You came all the way out here, not just for us, for the Masters of Rosin competition. You guys have placed and won several competitions around the world. Dabadoo first place, top five, Ego Clash. Now you're out here to see how you do in LA. So today we're going to walk through some of her flavors while experiencing some of our own. We also have some Burley from the other day. Burley was fire. Um, they had so many nice. panic attacks they forgot their jars, so now we're smoking it. You're um, welcome. So one man's a win. curse is another man's blessing. That's a win. That's a win. Yeah. yeah, call it a win. That, that's the object here. Now today's episode, we're not going to be doing five hot dabs. We're just going to be kind of cruising along. We're going to be enjoying these flavors, not um, singeing them past their desirable... A little terp tasting, you know? little terp tasting, you know? You I ever do. done this? Now, I'm sure this is no strange thing to you because when you guys enter these competitions, you probably have to sit down with some jars with your husband and you guys are like, all right, what are we going to do this time? Oh, and yeah. I know all your entries pretty much are in-house selections. Um, yeah, everything that we um, that we grow, we've selected ourselves from, some, from seeds. Okay, oh, nice. so before I get too far ahead of myself, just tell us who you are and what is Baked Taters? Um, I'm Mrs. Baked Tater by default. Um, so we started growing in West Virginia. My husband started growing in 04, and West Virginia is still highly illegal to grow. You still go to prison, two to 10. Um, kind of like the moonshiners out there, yeah, huh? Yeah, for sure. Same category. You're, is it still in the hills, kind of hidden, you know? Um, yeah, but the reason we went to Michigan is we weren't in the hills, really. Okay. Well, everything's in the hills. Yeah, I guess in, technically. In, in West WV. Virginia. Yeah. You know but what was I mean? he sun-grown there or was he indoor? No, he was always indoor. Okay. Um, because when he would try to do sun-grown, they would get eaten by animals mm -hmm. and whatnot. So. Grazing on Plus, once chronic. again, it's it's super illegal and the less people know, the better. So yeah, it's tough to indoor. be scrambling up to hills, trying to conserve your crop. Um, yeah. Now, when you guys decided to make the move, why did you actually choose Michigan? Was it because they had desirable laws and legislation, or did you have connections up there? How'd you go from WV up to Michigan? Um, really, just like the the caregiver laws and and all that jazz, and it was still within reason to visit family back in Michigan. Yeah. I mean, back in West Virginia. Not too um, far. We've gone out to Colorado and things like that, but also just super expensive out there. Yeah, there was so, a boom that hit Colorado for a while and everything became almost like unsustainable as far as the housing. Um, as soon as things went legal, yeah, everything just went to the moon. Yeah. And it was crazy. People said three to four times as their rent went up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in Northern Michigan, the um, I live by Traverse City. It's beautiful. We live a block away from a lake. It's like 50 foot deep. You can still see sand. It's oh, that's it's nice. gorgeous, but we paid $120,000 for our house. Wow. So that's it's that's amazing. good compared to California. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, when I hear that, I'm like, five. holy shit. I mean, we have a couple acres. We had and the house, the house came with two pole barns <sighs> what already. The fuck? That's yeah, crazy. that sounds amazing. Yeah, I mean, and, but now it's worth almost three because yeah. COVID and whatnot and. But we literally just bought our neighbor's house. That's awesome. So now we have like a little tater compound going that on. That's awesome. The so, compound's the goal. I really. mean, really, I mean, no booth smoking Chad's moving into the second uh, house yeah. that we bought. You know what I mean? You're That's building up the about. team. This is American sure. dream type stuff, Dude, you know? Some me. people I think mean, it doesn't exist anymore. Apparently, if you move to Michigan, your dollar can actually still buy you things. For yeah. $120,000 in California, you're lucky if you can get Chick-fil-A or a Panda Express Yeah, meal. that's like uh, meals for a month. That <laughs> really is true. Yeah, and I mean, Michigan, two days. you're building a <laughs> compound so That's now so now you guys you have the big tater compound um did you start out originally for resin production or did you guys kind of transition from flour to resin so it was always flour up into about two years ago so really making hash is something that's new to us and the reason that we ended up going to it was actually we got hlvd from a 
uh, cologne supplier in Michigan and we didn't know what it was. We were just excited to be in a place that was legal and we can go buy these clones and have all these genetics and we were just excited. Mm -hmm. What was yeah. the cut? Um, <laughs> Devil Driver. Hmm. Sunday um, Driver Cross. Yeah, it was, uh, we won't get into whose they were. I think we might need to get into whose they were. <laughs> so, I mean, but I bought 26 different strains and uh, oh, wow. right initially right in the first flower run a bunch of them looked weird like duds and, and we didn't know what it was we just thought well maybe the clones weren't healthy and then the next run a couple more looked weird and then it took us about six months to figure out that uh you know things started to break off easy it started to lose terpenes and the bud structure was crazy weird and when we found out we have it, uh, I reached back out to them and I was like, hey, you know, I, I have hops and I didn't before I moved here and I didn't before I got these clones. And they were like, well, we we can do some like cold snap, what is it called? I can, can't think of the word of it right now. I'm not sure. What were, um, what, were they trying to remediate the situation, like clean them or do they just yeah, want to test them Yeah, but themselves? I can't remember the name of it for some reason. Um, Oh, tissue culture. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Tissue. So, I was going to say it. Yeah, tissue culture. And so it was like, I was like, well, how much is it? And they were like, well, it looked $3,000 a strain. And I was like, so you sold me dirty cuts and now you want to sell me the cure to it? No. Mm -hmm. So Savage. we threw everything away and we restarted. And about that time, the flower prices were starting to kind of go downhill. Um, and we were like, okay, well, we'll make some hash. We went to Hash Bash Cup in Ann Arbor, Michigan and tried some Smokey Solventless for the first time. Shout out Smokey, that dude has Shout out Smokey, fire. yes. Um, and we were like, oh, we wanna make hash. And so we had Smokey uh, actually wash our stuff for us. And the strains that we had really weren't that great and he told us it was mids and that Son he- of a yeah. You gotta respect somebody that's willing to keep it real with you because- yeah. For sure. I've learned, like, I'm, I keep it real to a fault, but now I've realized like you can really hurt people's feelings and I, I, I carry that weight with me. So I try to hold back, but like if somebody's willing to tell you your shit sucks, don't get mad at them no. because they're looking out for you. And if they're willing to tell you it sucks, Hopefully they're gonna tell you when it's good yeah, too. Yeah, so you know, I mean, some people will always say or it help sucks. you find something that's good. <laughs> yeah, help you fix it. I mean, to show you like how close what we are still, um, I just I brought his entry out here to Masters of Rosin. Nice. So you know what I mean? So it you could have no... spit in it, put some sand in yeah, it. Yeah, I, I could have. And, and she still could have. We're you not never saying know. she didn't. <laughs> Smoky, you never sorry, know. buddy, you put your fate in the wrong hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Actually, but... I, I, I took his sticker off and put RDR on there, so RDR is rolling with the Smoky entry hey. this year. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But um, but no, he's always been like a mentor to, to a lot of hash brands in Michigan. He's taught classes, for, you know, with it and whatnot. And he hosts a competition out there, correct? He's going to start yeah. uh, Resin Rivals. I Resin think is Rivals. What, what call and it. he's been kind of putting this together for like the past year. And he's smart because he didn't rush it out. The yep. timing didn't work out for the first year, yep. but I know he's organizing again for next year. So if you guys are out there in Michigan, I think, I think it's a national event with winners from all over, correct? Yep. Yeah. Kind of like the way the Culture Cup does it. Uh, where it's you know people from nationally selected winners and then yeah. a local branch that yeah. you can qualify from Michigan. He's to going to do qualifiers. That's cool. So so if you're a local brand, like one thing we were talking about with Burley Boys yesterday was we well, said what competitions do you guys like? What do you like to compete in? And they said well the ones that we're fortunate enough to compete in. Some are invitational, so they don't necessarily have the choice to just pull up to everything they want. Like when you're a young emerging company, I remember how it was for us trying to like get our name out there, you know? It was about creating as much fire as you could and getting it in the right hands to get yep. noticed. Yep. But now with this saturation of producers in every state, it's tough to try to get your name into some of these bigger name tournaments. And, and when you wanna show how your stuff stacks up, it can be frustrating. So one cool thing about the Culture Cup and Resin Rivals, I didn't realize they were doing that. They give locals the opportunity to qualify. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a super national compared to a local national so if you qualify from the locals you have the chance to go up against all these dudes coming from California from Maine from Michigan all over there's fire yeah. everywhere you yeah, know exactly yep. and it's pretty cool because then you get a as long as the actual judging is on point and legitimate, you get a kind of a, a grasp on where you stand. So if you're transparent with yourself and you look at the results, you can better yourself. 100%. You can also learn from the entries, you know? Say you really obsess with a certain terp, like our burly boys over here with all their beef stew, their ground beef and all this stuff. <laughs> um, 
maybe you realize finally, oh shit, these competitions, even though my beef stew, my beef, my ground beef number 28, this shit is fire. Um, it is killer. Maybe the competition setting, it's not going to be able to show people how good our stuff is. So then you start to dial in what you want to enter. So that's one cool yeah. thing about all of us coming I can together. I smell from over here. Do you smell this? Yeah, I can smell it over Smelling here. Smelling this is making me realize, I think we need to take our first dab of the show. It's Absolutely. been too long. But so for our first dab. We love dab, you, Patreon. You're better than everyone else. For our first dab of the day, we have a lot of jars on the table. I have the jar that gave the Burly Boys two panic attacks. We got some Ganja Guru. I picked out a, an old strain, Romulan. It's oh, actually shit. older than I yeah. am. You know? I remember that yeah. when I was in high school. And then we have some Real Deal Resin. I have some Slurpee. We're running low getting sold out. We also have some baked taters. So times are good. We have a lot of choices. Do you want to show us a jar that we can show the people? To sure. Th they're wondering, hey, these guys, they call it a hot dabs podcast. They don't even smoke. So what's this first one you're showing us? This is um, Def by Booth 3. Wow. So it's, hold it, right? it's Def Star to Super Booth. It's on the nose, very Def Star leaning, but on the taste, it's a little bit more fruity orange taste to her. And do you guys pheno hunt for specific profiles that you like? We were talking to Burley yesterday. Um, they kind of just hunt what they know they're going to like, and then the audience kind of just finds their way to them. Nope. Um, so I, I pheno hunt to find what, you know, obviously what I want to smoke on too, but, you know, what are the people wanting to smoke on? On my so you guys are out there for the people. So, I mean, on my Discord, I have a, a review section. Really? And I'll ask people, like, oh, did you like this one that just dropped out? And if they don't like it, I'll, it doesn't matter if she does 6 7% to, If no one you know, wants it. If you don't want it, I don't care about it. Uh, most of mine, like my Red Onion here, uh, she's only a, like a 2.1-er. Like, she's not a... Not you, a crazy yield. Nope. Fruit Gushy's the same way. Most of mine are less than a 2.5% yield. That's why the price is what the price is. So, yeah. you don't Pay necessarily have to hit a, a, a certain yield as long as it's hitting a turp profile that people want. You're going to give the people what they want. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, my you know we grow kind of for ourselves in the sense that we want to smoke a large variety of of hash Fire you know of, of good hash and sometimes that day it might be something funky and sometimes it might be orange or fruit um like our last drop we had 18 flavors it comes out of a small room we only have 16 lights split between two rooms That's can i try this of course all right first, Dig in. first you know? dab of the show <laughs> I, I i've been smelling it long enough can't wait to try it. Now, when you actually dig in, it gets even louder. Sometimes when a jar sits, if you open it up, give it a little whip, and you're going to bring For it sure. right back to life. Hopefully, if you're doing a competition, give everything a whip before you try it. Yeah. Feel free to try anything that we have on the table over here. This one's really nice. I'm probably going to try, uh, we can go ahead and call it Burley's Panic Attack. Yeah, that's actually the new name of that strain, the Burley Panic Attack. I love it. It Coming really soon. should be. It really should be. <laughs> if you have ADHD, it's actually just going to settle you down. <laughs> now, this one has a really nice, pleasant effect. It's super smooth. There's a gas that kind of lingers on the end. It has almost kind of like a, what are those, like a, like a sour tart, like a sour tart I, finish. I, I, I taste the tart and the fruit. I she smells gassy. She's fun. Well, She's a fun little play. The gas is definitely there, but on the back end, <laughs> you can taste uh a bunch of undertones. That's nice. That is Thank nice. You. So <laughs> I'm still kind of mind blown with that. You guys, when you're doing your selections, it's all for like what the people want because that to me can become scary at times because the people themselves, there seems to be like almost like an AG, a ADHD to the consumer in the sense that a lot of times they don't even have the patience for the pheno hunts that like you talk about and the, the oh, yeah. small rooms, you know? So you guys have to dedicate, AKA sacrifice square footage to keep hunting while you have your proven phenos. Yeah. Um, what makes you want to keep feeding people what they want as opposed to kind of creating a profile or a taste that they know they can always come back to? Because in my mind, this is what I'm thinking. We do have we do have strains that we keep around. You guys have staples. Yeah, okay, we do have staple strains that I we keep around. I thought you were swapping it out every run. No, 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 no. We're not little... stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you tell us a little bit about what the, the staples are? Um, we have several that we, so, you know, red onion, something that we, we've had around from the beginning, almost fruit gush is one we've had around a lot. She's been the one that we've entered the most in competitions. And that's what got fifth at Ego Clash NorCal last year. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
and you know placed in camp 710 the death by booth three melt got two first place melts that is she's amazing clear. she's clear on melt she's beautiful open that one up let's show the people at home the death by booth is this one of your newer selections it is um so this one uh, is one that we found probably like a run ago uh and as far as melt goes number three is our melt strain number sevens she doesn't pull as good for melt so do you guys release melt uh, we have not released melt yet just because we have not been able to find a way to produce it and it be affordable yeah. for people because of how, just how small of amount we get back yeah so right. and uh, then it takes away from the quality of the rosin too once right. you take the best melt out of it yeah i do have a secondary brand that at that point if i do pull melt out of something that i push what's left over into the secondary that's brand. smart because yeah. some people they'll just keep stuffing it in the same sticker but if there's a fall off when it comes to the taste or the quality people will be like damn what happened to I this mean, baked tater batch? only good as your last drop that's true. that's true you know and so i mean when it comes to hunting new stuff it's i i feel like some of your big brands if they just run the same thing over and over again i mean as a society we consume and we get tired of the same thing that's why we get rid of cars after a couple years fashion and, yeah fashion nightclubs rebrand every five years <laughs> right so i just i feel like if we kept the same eight or nine strains around um and only those and didn't look and like self reflect and go how can we improve and get better really we're pheno hunting to find something better mm -hmm. so i can eventually go to competition and beat dustin hmm. i like that i like that that's too goal. that's the yeah. way you should look at yeah life. because i think he got fourth at ego i got fifth i think you we keep beating her by a half a point like and then we at culture cup you were like one place or two places ahead i was right there but just you know it's friendly competition it definitely is. well that's it keeps you going it keeps you growing inspires you to keep it, doing i mean a little bit more i always say when you lose you have the opportunity to learn from it yeah. if you win then you don't really sit back and go oh man what should i what could have i done but if you don't win then you get to go okay well this is a really good jar but like i smelled everything else at the competition how can i improve either this one or find something better and then kind of know well at least when you're at competitions like smoking jacket and ego There's a lot of boxes to check kind of like what's there and if they don't check the boxes then it goes to our secondary brand mm -hmm. yeah you know and i think that's a good like healthy conversation with yourself because the more that you're able to accept hey i didn't have the best entry at the table this day but you take it, like you said, as a learning experience. Like, yeah. I feel like the, the worst thing is to get into the state of denial where you leave a competition. Um, as long as, once again, the judging has to be legitimate. And when we say that, we mean we want blind judging. I don't want any competition where you see the, the brands on the jars and you have a celebrity panel yeah. judging, okay? I want peer-reviewed, if possible, or at least judges that are very knowledgeable. For sure. And then I want it to be double-blind. I don't want people to know what they're voting yeah. for. Right. Just number jars and the people that made it the hash, because they're going to be the ones that critique it to the... Uh, constructive degree you know they're not just bashing it they're gonna give it credit where credit is due and, and I, I go back and forth on this because I, I, I was like you in the sense that I think the biggest review and the one that should count the most is your peer review but then there is that element of are all the peers gonna be uh, objective exactly yeah. and for the most case we notice like the best makers are like you are accurately judging yourself i know a lot of times we'll give ourselves eights um like you don't you're not just I've, gonna stack the deck for yourself i've definitely um given people higher scores than myself yeah and then been beat by like just a couple Ex yes you're like damn I, I think it happened to both of us last year at ego clash we missed out on third by a couple points and we didn't give ourselves tens you missed out on yep. fourth by a couple points but that's just us being Humble in the sense that there's yeah, always going to be something better out there. I rarely give any tens because you never yeah. know what the yeah. fuck's out there. Yeah, you know? nines is about yeah. as high as I go on competitions just because you want to leave that room for that unicorn. Because I was going to say, there's by, a unicorn yeah. somewhere on a the, mountain. The, the like 27th a jar, and you're like, yep. oh my God, this is better. And I gave all fucking nine and a half to that other one. Damn it, that was like an 8.5. Right, right. But that brings up my point is when you're sitting at this table with all these people that also entered, some of them might be like, oh shit, this jar is better than mine. I need to give it sevens. or 
They think uh, that them being harsher on a jar that's better than theirs will bring it back to life to give them a shot. That, Whereas a competition that only has an expert panel that are actually experts. I don't want people that are just selling e-rigs. I don't want yeah. people that don't understand things or just want to be an influencer or a celebrity. I want people that love hash and resin so much and appreciate it yeah. that they're going to sit and not worry about, oh shit, this, this jar is actually better than mine so I can't judge it as high. So that's one cool yeah. thing about masters or, or competitions that have a good panel of knowledgeable judges is you don't have to worry about people voting your shit lower if they're intimidated. Yep. Got to worry about Judge Willie. Judge Willie. I was just on FaceTime <laughs> with him yesterday. He's a hell of a He'll character. He'll give you fours across the board. If you guys are ever in Thailand, you better hope you don't get the Russian judge, which is Judge Willie. <laughs> judge <because> Willie. <laughs> that dude. The, simply Adam's scale starts at six, but the Judge Willie scale doesn't exceed a four. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to create a scale somewhere in between those two that are just like... Fours Jeez. to sixes, I guess, buddy. Fives, that's how you win. Uh, as we continue to go, I'm gonna take a big dab for this next one. We've got people in the chat chiming in. They said, Toro, 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 we wanna see a big one. Guess I what? I like that. I got you. We got Hunter Hash in the chat. They said, Mrs. Big Taters is a real one. That's why she feeds the people what they want. Yo, we yo. Got, <laughs> let's go. We got, uh, all right, let's catch up on some of these comments. I didn't realize we were getting so much interaction. We got Lunchtime Dab Time says he needs one of those hoodies. Do you guys have merch available? Where can you get it? Um, I do have uh, thebaketaters.com. Baketaters.com. Thebaketaters.com. Yeah. Is it the? It's the. Thebaketaters.com. Um, but these are not on there yet. Oh! So, oh hashtag and this is exclusive. You know what I mean? That's okay. They'll pay. You got yeah. We're going to do a exclusive a Baketaters hot dabs hoodie that's only available in the studio. So only the people oh, that nice. come through nice. can get one. Nice. That means not you, lunchtime dab time. They're hating <laughs> it in the chat. They're all punching the air right now. <laughs> Hana Hash, what's up? The new, oh, everybody's loving your hoodie, actually. King Thank Palm you. said the hoodie is fire. Jake from State Terps, not to be confused with State Farm. By the way, everybody whose name I mentioned in this episode, you owe us $500. This is pretty much a premium sponsor package. You have been acknowledged. We will invoice you. Uh, melted solventless. Melted solventless. And do you do that just because like you don't want people to ever have an experience that isn't a top notch? Hundred percent. Yeah. I just don't want there to be multiple tiers of this jar because most people are not really gonna like read the fine print. They never do even when they buy cars and houses. Most people can't so, read. Uh, there's that. <laughs> and so I don't. I just don't want people to get it and go, oh, that really wasn't that good. And not realize it. it's because they bought a cheap jar. So yeah, don't get it fucked up. Yeah, if it's it, 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 melted solventless, only. don't come for me if it's not that good. Back in the hey. day, before people were doing tears, she's not here for the lowest. We price. would just release our <laughs> jars. <coughs> and if something like you would weigh more or it wasn't quite as good as like like Skittles would get released in like a different color uh, top. Yeah. But like nothing said tears back in the day. This was right. before Seven Ten even did it. So I would give it to my reps. I'd say like, all right, Z, you want Z? This is gonna be like 60, 80 a G. But you need yep. this GMO or this cookies and cream that would dump. We could do that at like 40 a G. Well, but then the out. reps would buy this shit and charge it all up to like 100, 120 a G. I'm not saying what my reps do. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, bless their hearts. I'm out here doing all this just to Make try to justify millions. what they charge. Now, right. hey, Masonic Smoker that. said that you were supposed to do his podcast today, but you blew him off to come down here. Is That's that true? That's not even true. He hasn't even hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Masonic, you're lying. Actually, he didn't even say that. I'm just trying to get you booked for his. So, Masonic, if you need a guest, mm -hmm. she's ready, actually. Yo. Yep, I'm here. We're only going to take 20% for the booking fee as I work my way up. And yeah, she needs 10 packs of seeds. Hunter Hash yeah, is out I here. I have a lot of his seeds. Oh, <laughs> shit. Shout out. Also, Bandits, all you have is seeds? Yeah. All right. He is a breeder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> House of Bandits said they need that in also a shirt. Have you made it in a shirt? It's underneath this. Yeah. 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 There's a pink shirt under here. Also Let's have go. to come to the podcast to get it coming through hard. We got Adam mm -hmm. Ill. Adam Ill just dropped the Blazin album. Have you ever heard of Blazin? How are people feeling about Blazin in Michigan? That's a good question. What is that? That's a good question. <laughs> Tell her what it is, Darby. Well, he takes uh, Backwood or uh, okay. uh, Brothers Broadleaf, gets it full okay. of weed, throws a big fat hash snake down it, sticks it in some 55 pound paper, and low temp presses it. So it's a hash hole blunt, but we press it and it oozes out. Blazin. Blunt rosin. Mmm. Ew. <laughs> right? Yeah. He, he wanted to not like it. I didn't want to like it, is but it, I, good? it was good. It yeah. was okay. good. Okay, well, if it's, it's good, it's good. It it's took good. the I mean, essence it's good, of it's the good. backwood. It's like taking one perfect dab that is just a backwood and a hit. 
We've also okay. looked backwards at one point and been like, yeah, this is it. At, at one point. At you one point. <laughs> and then it, it brings you back to that and you're like, is this it? Yeah. I, I, is, is it this it? strangely no. close? Speaking it of could be strange it. shit, <laughs> I know I grew up out in Pennsylvania, which isn't far from West Virginia, and we were on the grav bongs, okay? If you could fucking take a jug and put some type of liquid in it, I was draining that shit out to get high out of it. I don't know about you. I'm from you. Florida. Oh, okay. So you're probably doing weirder shit. You're yeah, on like it's bath weird salts, in Florida. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It gets weird. I was gonna say, what are type of the weird ways that you guys would get high back then? Like we'd use like the big two liters up to like one gallon of the water bottles. You know? I've never seen Suck where you it empty the- and it comes out the bottom. I would always use a big bucket and pull it up. I'd get the three gallon apple no, juice. No, no. I would. So I'm not this cool. Yeah. <laughs> High school is crazy. I, I, out I would here. put one little hole in the bottom of a jug. So then Never I would pull it out and the water would slowly be draining out. And as it, there'd be a socket at the top with the weed. And you would light it. And then this whole bottle is filling with smoke and it's sealed at the top. So then when there's just a little bit of water left at the bottom, if you want to get crazy, you do it dry. You do it. You go in dry if you want to get crazy. But you if like you leave Masonic. a little bit of water at the bottom <laughs> of the bottle, you take that lid off, it's screwed. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> Not doing that one again, but that's what we did back then. Was there anything weird in Florida that you guys would do? Yeah, did you have to get high of an alligator? Anything um, weird? <laughs> it's an alligator skin. Um, that's nice. Not really. I just kind of like stole my mom's roaches. Oh, you know, okay. I wasn't that cool. Dang, you know what I mean? So the show, Darby, have you ripped the dab yet? Yeah, yeah. I smoked some of the first stuff that we had. Okay, just making it was delicious. sure. I think it's this part of the show where we turn things up a notch we're up to 44 people in the in the live apparently people want to know what mrs baked taters has yo to say. one more flavor for the people chief and max 916 said he also stole his aunt's roaches one summer <laughs> i mean it, i mean that's what i did i didn't do the i mean baked tater yeah he definitely had all the crazy bongs and all the stuff and i did it though i wasn't cool when, <laughs> when you said you, that you were always flower at first, but you got the hop late, and that's what kind of pushed you into doing the seeds and kind of hunting your own stuff, mm-hmm. is that also what kind of made you realize, oh, hey, we can do resin selections that doesn't have to just be flower? Was that kind of all coinciding at the same time? Um, yeah, but in the same sense, it was at that point just trying to survive the crash that mm-hmm. was going on in Michigan. So sustaining the prices any yeah. way you could. Yeah, I mean, because this is all we do. We don't have side jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, we, my husband's not here because he's at home gardening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The plants don't take yeah. a vacation. They, no. Never. Daily hand-watered. It sucks. All right, yeah. now let's but get that's into love, that. Though. <laughs> we were Every talking day. about this before the episode. Hand-watered, hand-paddled. What do you guys do? Kind of broke. That's why we do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people think that extra care and attention with that hand watering, you know, with some people think it's just the vibes of the yeah, person. The energy, the no, energy, you're yeah. the good energy, electricity. Into it. I mean, for us, you know, as far as like he likes to be in there, it's OCD, like clinical, mm-hmm. not just saying it. You know, so he's in there lifting up the plants and seeing exactly how, like, this plant needs 15 seconds and this one needs 20 seconds. Just to so he's doing individual plan analysis. It, I mean, that's a big way to just say that he's making sure they all need to be fed. Yeah, you know and what I mean. He's giving them what they need. <laughs> but yeah, we've talked about pick that. Got to up sometimes. Be like, oh, whoa, what the yeah. hell? Basically, just having an excuse to hug every plant every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love if that. something goes wrong, you know, they're his babies. Yeah. You know, he gets upset. Uh, when it comes to the reason that we hand wash, we like to just be able to look and see how it's going mm-hmm. and like how quick or is this bud breaking down and not just kind of on some things, closing a lid, pressing a button and catching hope, your analytics, you know? Yeah. So for us, it's just like, okay, well this bud's beginning to break down. So we're going to stop paddling right now, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever the case is. Instant feedback. You don't have to worry about hitting an end of a cycle and realizing, oh shit, this stuff mm-hmm. got a little bit more beat up. You can we... always wash it again. You can't take back what you've already done. That's, <laughs> that's like doing acid. We Wise used to always words. say, you, once you punch your ticket, there's yeah. no going back. You can always <laughs> like, do it more. Once you jump off that fucking bridge, you better hope that bungee cords. That's the damn truth. <laughs> uh, now, in the chat, this is hilarious. It already has come up. I made fun of this, and I can't even believe this is real, but we are in 2024, so let's address it. Somebody said, paddle with an asterisk. When you say hand washing, some people like to say, nah, excuse me, sir, you're not actually using your hands. Uh, that's a paddle wash. Guess what, motherfucker? You're putting your hands on the paddle, first yeah. of all. Second yeah. of all, do you really think 
there is going to be a difference between you putting your hands in and doing this and a paddle. Punching nugs or something? I'm not judging you if you do it either way. I'm not judging you whatsoever. <laughs> but if you think that using your hands to do that is going to create a better product, you're fucking stupid. THC chiropractor? But I'm, I'm not judging you. And I don't mean anything like it's not personal. With all due respect, you're fucking stupid. If you think you're going to put your hands in there and you're going to come out with anything better than how it was grown, okay? It's just an embarrassment. But let's address it. How do you guys feel? Is there a difference between hand washing? Between a, Does it have to be with your hands? Or can you use a paddle for your hand washing? I mean, personally, we use a paddle. Yeah. And I think most people do. Now, when we're talking about hand watering, yes, he actually does have the wand. You know, In his hand. In, in his hand. In his hand. He's not spitting on it. I was going to say, no. the water you know I mean? is not going to come out of your hands. Because if I say, hand water my plant, and they're like, eh, it's hose watered, technically. Listen, guys, if we want to play that game, nobody's going to enjoy anything. And then we get into what they're saying. Makai melts, traditional foot wash, okay? Did you put your feet in it? But was it really your toes? Is it a toe wash? Is it, it toe be. jam? Did you jam it without the sauce? Is it You're toe, toe sauce? jamming it? Listen, if we need That's to new do, tech. New tech. Go jam 2025. <laughs> if you guys want to pay 150 a G, I'm going to make a thumbnail. And guess what? <laughs> it's actually going to be a thumbnail. If we need to take it that far. I think it's time for another dab. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> what flavor are we trying now? Do you want to do one of yours again? You want to show the people? Absolutely. Or you want to do some burly? Uh, if you want to dab the melon parfait, you can. If melon? Not. Parfait. Let's show the people at home exactly what this is. Now, you guys do your own hunts, which means you're going to have your own selections, which means if you guys aren't sharing these cuts, you can't get them anywhere Well, else. no. Hold on. Melon Parfait is grown by Mom's Secret Stash. It's not technically grown by me and my husband. This is a collab? That's a collab jar. So you guys work with other people? We do. And, pear, and the other side of Melon Parfait is actually Little Lake Valley Seeds Pear Parfait. What? Oh, nice. So you're saying you do collaborations, you pop seeds from other people, do it. and you just make fire all the way around? Turn someone else's stuff into fire? I mean, we, I mean, but actually, she's the only garden we collab with. I was gonna say, how do you identify people that are worth doing collabs with? Because as we all know, even if you grow fire, some people are just so hard to work with that it does, it's not worth the yeah, stress. Yeah, it's, it, we actually, she's actually one that we just bought that uh, house with, so she's really easy to work she's with. She's part of the tater she's, compound? Yeah, she's, she helped build she's the a tater. sweep, no, she didn't help build it, but she's along for the ride and we will continue building with her. She's gonna be building you know what I mean? with you guys. And she grows fire, clearly, because one thing about solvents, we mentioned this before, there's no way to really remediate trash. Uh, as no. far as like our extraction process, there can be small tricks of the trade, but you're never really gonna make it better than how it was cultivated and handled 100%. throughout the process getting to you. It all matters. You grow know? up for an extra week on so accident. Really, she was just willing to follow the everything exactly the same as we did. The only thing difference is her lights are different for now. Um, but, I and mean, we've noticed a difference. More HPS the, or more LED? She's all LED. Oh, and you we guys have, are HPS? We have one HPS room and one LED room. Oh, nice. How do you guys notice the difference between the two rooms? About a 1% difference between the two Ooh, rooms. Better Tell for me HPS. HPS is more? It's, act, yeah, HPS is, um, no, sorry. Our LED room technically gets more, but it gets more biomass. More biomass? Yeah, the nugs. More biomass are, and yield then, right? Because it, it's just, It always more comes out actually. to be about the same amount. Off, same percentages. Yeah, so HPS room, we have six lights and we generally get between like 30, 35,000 grams, wet grams out of that. And then our LED room, we have 10 lights and we generally get around like 40,000, 45,000 wet grams out of that room. So there's okay. a difference, but really in the end, we're not it's getting ratio, more though. hash. Yeah. Um, Cause I remember when a lot of people but the buds switched are just so to LED, LED, the room. oil ring on the joints would not be as wet as some of the HPS ones. They're not. We've um, actually, one of the reasons that we bought this property next to us is there's already three pole barns on it and we're going to have one pole barn dedicated to flower. Cause we found that it's almost impossible to have a room dedicated for making hash and then a room dedicated for like trying to do them both is not working for us no you know yeah. I mean? people yeah. underestimate the difference between growing for flower biomass and growing for resin and when people talk about resin farmers you may underestimate what it means but yeah and and then i think because you can run in the hps room colder than you can the led room i think yeah. that's and this is just a theory but maybe preserving mm -hmm. some terpenes in there for sure and and uh, being able to you know run that room colder 
keep our terpenes, you know, you know, that room can run at 70 something degrees or even colder than that. It's best to grow in winter time. And, and in Northern Michigan, that's not hard to do. It's oh, like eight great. months out of the year. Oh, I didn't yeah. think about oh, yeah. that. That's <laughs> so in Northern good. Michigan, you open the windows for your cold room. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, our cold room's a 12 by 11 walk-in freezer. I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, I did have a friend, it Curtis. It's like 110 out here in my area. Yeah. But, and but you like, know what oh. I say, everyone makes great hash in the wintertime in Michigan, but show me your hash in the summer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> summer so hash. If you're having a competition in Michigan, you better schedule it for the dead of winter, buddy. Yeah. I know Ego Clash, actually, it's kind of funny, um, depending on the weather of that day it'll affect the consistencies of the jar because yeah. we're in a barn like an open air barn. i know yeah <laughs> and oh i remember king of z hill which was on april 20th Dude. In, in the park in the sun in the sun with no canopy oh. somebody did fresh press and their jar was literally a jar of distillate so that day versus <laughs> like the ego clash where like everything is so cold to where it almost doesn't show how wet it can be you know it's interesting right. variables right because in the beginning of the day ego clash you know it's you know maybe the 60s outside and the jar is a little bit wetter you know it's gassing off some more terpenes and whatnot but by the by the nighttime when it's like 30 something and you're shivering and the jar is all like you know glazed over and kind of cold and you can barely smell it mm -hmm. i mean at that point you have to hope that the hash Five. makers know <laughs> you know that it's really not the same uh, yeah, in the beginning as the end yeah you'd hope they're judging it with a grain of salt in the sense yeah. that you're like give it a whip try to get it woken up you yeah know? exactly yeah. Yeah. warm it up some in your hands do something for it because everyone that there you know got through um uh, brandon and so their jar should be good enough to be at the table. So, exactly. you know, give it, give it do some empathy. You, you know what I mean? If it was your jar. Yeah, if it know? was your jar and you wanted how someone. How would you want to present it? Exactly. You Treat know? others how you want to be treated. So Bingo. To speak. You that, know? That's a good way to look at everything in life. You're you know? smoking the same one as us? What are we smoking on? Oh, you can help yourself to anything on the table. What'd you do on your first one? This one, and it was extremely smooth. It's cool, right? Yeah. Burley's Panic was fire. It's very, <laughs> it was very, very smooth. I liked it. I just you had may a have couple. Heard of Panic at the Disco. This one's Panic at the Burley. I guess I'll take one dispo. of my own. Panic at the Dispo! Hey. <laughs> wow, this one's awesome. What was this the second one we just did? Uh, st strawberry Melons, which is straw guava to mimosa, and then pear parfait. This one is like amazing. It's a blend. It's so That's smooth. Nice. It's a blend. She's a blend. I'll put her here. Fresh, too. <clears throat> now, your grow mediums, when you guys are talking about your, you have rooms that are HPS, you have rooms that are LED, mm -hmm. do you guys also change up the mediums to compare like a soil grown versus a cocoa, or what are you guys working with? What's the regimen? So, right now we're expanding on to a lean-to on one of our barns to try uh, growing in some living soil beds. I mean, at the end Ooh. of the day, we, we make our money in our rooms, and that's how we, we feed our three tots. So real tots, not yeah, potatoes. Yeah, yeah, real tots, <laughs> but tater tots, hey. if you will. So uh, we don't really want to R&D on our soil and what we use in there because that's how we pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So we are going to build some living soil beds and try that. That's awesome. At the moment, we kind of take a synganic approach to it. Um, we mix our own median, if you will. It's cocoa, perlite, and then there's different worm casting back guanos, yeah. something to feed the microbials. And then, you know, we're supplement them throughout the cycle that helps a lot with all the flavors too i mean we try you know but we have not gone fully organic i know that's kind of taboo so people really hate that but i mean i feel like more people even myself i was always a big proponent of a full organics and myself and sam still are just because we're lucky to have like a sun-grown farm but Can I see people like vital garden supply mm -hmm. Uh, has introduced me to a synganic approach, which is I am, I used to think that if you apply or introduce any salts into your uh, organic medium, that you're going to kill all the life. Yeah, yeah. But that's what we all think. We're sometimes. finding out, thanks to research, you know, actually getting some of these numbers and the the scientific research that people like Brian, organic Brian from Vital Garden Supply, are doing is. It shows that you can have a seganic approach as long as you're giving the plants what they need when they need it and you're not overdoing it. You're going to be able to grow a fire crop while mm -hmm. also sustaining the, the, the earth, the soil. Because if we deplete the soil, we've talked about this a yeah. hundred times, um, there's not going to be anything left for us to grow food or True. to enjoy anything. There will be famine in general. Yeah. So. And you're not so much feeding the plant, you're feeding the soil so the soil can feed the plant. So right. you're just keeping that soil alive and thriving at the right pH. It's not going to run into that, you know, acidity and the acid overload and it will be able to cultivate life. Right. I mean, it's just, I always say everyone has their own recipe. What you use, honestly, I don't care if it's good hash. 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As long as you're not spraying like pesticides, don't no kill. No Eagle 20. Don't, yeah, don't kill people. <laughs> um, but other than that, I don't care how it's grown. Yeah, you no know. pesty pens. We don't want to harm our bodies in the search for fire. Z Glenn said, if you need to take a hot dab, he got you. Mm. Tricome Development's trying to come on and rip a two gram. All right, Chad, I think you guys got enough. We are going to end this live. If you want to see the rest of this episode, join the Patreon. It'll be up there later this week. Thanks for joining us. That was easy. There was a shit ton of people too. Yeah, man. it ran mm. through. All right. <clears throat> I think since the chat's gone, it's time to up the ante a little bit. I'm ready to get into some slides. I'm ready to get into some big dabs. <laughs> hey, Chad, could you bring me my drink, please? Yeah. Cool. Boom. Look how fucked this is. That's roached. Mm. Good job. You should be proud of that. Thank you. Yeah, you earned that stripe. It's a thick one. All right, for our next dab of the show, I think it's time we up the ante. We already have a Chaz slide here from the last episode, so I'm going to be doing this. That looks like it's uh, going to be fun. What flavor are you going to smoke? I think I'm going to go in big on the panic attack, honestly. I, I want something heavy lifting. Uh, we've been talking about this blend. It's really cool. We got the Sticky Fields Durban Cherry Tree blended with the Z, and, and we're going to be going in on our favorite banger. This is the Toro Court Slide. Now, when it comes to you doing these competitions, what banger or what type of setup do you usually like to use? I know Masters, it's just uh, the panel that decides, but in most other ones, the peers all have to vote and go through a process. Can you describe to us a little bit about how you like to go through the judging process? We've sat beside each other at a, at a couple of the events and we you have. rip your dabs quicker than mine. So I think you might have more of an efficient process. And this is something people can learn from because if you're an idiot like me and you show up with a, a double XL Toro mm -hmm. slurper to a competition where you have to rip 40 <laughs> in a day, you're gonna be slower than the people that maybe Dude. thought of bringing a bucket or something of that nature. So can you just tell us a little bit about your setup when you're going specifically for these competitions? I mean, I, I usually take my little C-size love with me, so I don't care if someone neither... I mean, I love the rig, but if you break it, it's, I'm, you know, I'm not going to cry. The you older know? I get, the more I think like that, too. You know? Like, I'm bringing a rig that I'm not necessarily going to have a panic attack or Ex shout out my burly boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, I, I, I just usually have my Quave Slurper with me. Um, I mean, what I do is I take a jar uh, when it comes around. First thing I do is I smell it because it's always that nice, like, yeah. quick smell. The crack. Uh, the first crack smell. Um, Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh. Our favorite. That's why Mrs. Baked Taters puts all those little tater butts on the jar. I mean, it is <laughs> what it is. They want that crack smell. Yeah, get right in there, big, big dog. Big right? dog, get right in there. <laughs> So, I mean... So you go smell first before uh, you even look at it? I mean, I really do. Yeah. Like, I try to every time. It's like an instant thing. And then I bring it back and I look at it and then I'll smell it again. If the look matches the smell, you're like... Huh? Yeah, exactly. Now, so, are you deciding pretty much just off of that look and smell if this is even going to have a shot? Or does anything ever completely come out of nowhere with taste? 100%. And even it, there is things that do come through with taste that you yeah, weren't expecting? 100%. And it... How do you judge those? Because we were just talking about how things have to check all the boxes. Does anything ever taste so good that you kind of overlook like some of those initial flaws as far as just like color? I mean, no. No. I mean, <laughs> in my opinion, it needs to tick all the boxes when you're going to a competition as like Masters of Rosin and all these things. It can't um, be like dark but taste amazing. Right. right. Because I mean, I'm not going to go back and change my four or five on your like hash that's super super dark and i'm not saying that in the sense of like mature resin heads which are mm -hmm. more amber but you should be scoping mm -hmm. um i'm not saying to to pull early you know i'm i'm saying to not let it go too far anyway yeah definitely. or be dirty you know so in my opinion panic at the podcast it, it, ha it has to yeah panic at the podcast it has to it has to take all the boxes Just go <laughs> You've activated the hot dabs disco round. Let's go. So, I mean, if it's a... This is what's going on in Mike's head yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> when he was just sitting here nonverbal, that, that's what was going on. That, I need pizza. <laughs> God bless you, Burly Boys. You're always going to be with us in our hearts forever. 
Amen. <laughs> Nothing happened to them. They're just with us in our hearts forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin starts playing. <laughs> Lord. Oh. Speaking of Sarah McLaughlin and sad songs, has there ever been any strains or selections that have been fucking awesome, but for some reason or another you guys lost them, or uh, fate didn't have it in the cards for you guys to keep the cut? Um, there's, That's a good question. I mean, it, it, it really is. But I mean, I have one that I just kept, Kiwi Cheesecake, that only does 1.23. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, I mean, it's 1.2 little... is absolutely terrible. But you will keep that if the people want it. I will grow like maybe four plants and you can fight over jars. That yeah. is crazy. You know what I mean? If you guys are hearing this, I don't even do things. If you're sub two, like it has to be my favorite strain. But Skittles is my favorite strain with garlic juice and they're hitting four plus. Well, know? I mean, that's awesome. But the kiwi cheesecake is just, it has a very nice sour now and like sour apple now and later smell and taste. And it's my new favorite one. It's your favorite. So they yeah, exactly. So it's her favorite. It, you gotta I mean, keep it around. Exactly. <coughs> so that one, I'm just like, I'm so ready for it. The limes that we just found. You just keep all the jars. Is um, like. Yeah. A, do you release it or do you just keep them at that? This point? guy just smoke all the garlic. I will juice. smoke all the garlic juice. Yeah. So <laughs> with <laughs> when we pheno hunt, we're pheno hunting in just one gallon of pots and a four by eight. And we have two of those and we pheno hunt. So those. the whole thing is a pheno hunt. Right. So mm -hmm. then there's not enough to release at that point. So then the next time we'll have like maybe two or three plants and then we might have enough for an entry or enough for a blend if we really like it. And how this, far along is that now? You're looking at like eight months in before you it, actually have a scalable batch for anybody else to try but you. I mean, really the the limes I got in Barcelona back in March. The seeds. Yes. And you're just now and getting to taste just it. Somehow now, made it back. We don't know how. We don't know how. But they we germinated don't. in Michigan. That's what yeah. crazy. And now <laughs> you're getting for the first time a chance to try it or this is actually a batch that you had enough to add? No, this was a first time. The limes is the first time that we got a chance to try it. Really? Um, yeah. So it took us a little bit to get her in, uh, just because we had so much other things going on. But she's uh, <coughs> really excited about it because we didn't buy her for hash. We walked by. They had some fire flower, some of the best flower we've actually seen in a really long time. What's the breeder? Um, I can't pronounce it. Mm. It's like El Borax. Oh, something. it was it was a Spanish breeder or right. a European. They don't have a website. They don't have a phone number. You Where have to it? email yeah, them. The exotic. It was at Spanibus, like it the was. expo. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't even see those. Exactly. So Sometimes it was you take a risk. Kind of by where they were going to be announcing organic cup. So I was already just kind of in the area, and then I was looking. I was like, mm, pink sprite looks sounds good. Cookies and lime sounds good. I'm gonna go over there and smell some flower while I wait for the results. And um, which it didn't go well at Organic Cup for us. But mm -hmm. why um, do you think that was? The entry wasn't what the judges were. Yeah, for. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, it, it's you're only it's they found out you were American. No. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> um, do not recommend going through France. They're they're not nice. Really? Don't like bring getting hash to, to France. If you're going to Barcelona, quick tip: try to get a direct flight. Now, when you actually got it pulled down, how was the resin yield? Was this another like low yield for you guys, but crazy terps on this limes? Actually, the limes didn't do terrible. And when I talk in yield, I'm talking like two rosin and two first wash rosin, not overall. Oh, so this is super fire first so, pull, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, so like that's, I always do confuse people with that because I'll go, oh yeah, it's like a 2% strain. And really, when you combine everything, it's probably closer to almost a four. But when you, you know, but that's not where I make my money. I don't make my money no. on food grade. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Taters. Yeah, for taters you obviously here. is different. But like how many washes too. go into the tater jars? Is it all first wash? First. All first Just wash. Just first wash. So everything oh, is no. yeah. two through four wash gets into the second. Melted solventless, yeah. yep. And then if I make carts, it comes out of the melted solventless. So that's just kind of where my cart material comes from is the same stuff as melted solventless. Nice, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Of course, So that's and then. Smart. So it's all the same grade. strains, it's just a different wash. Yeah, unless I one of the phenos didn't come out the way I wanted it to, whatever box it didn't tick, it'll be first wash, but it'll get pushed over. Uh, you might even get first wash. I, we had a room kind of go bad one time, and the entire room went to melted solventless. And that hurt, you know, yeah. when you go from Expecting. first tier to second tier pay. Like, yeah. that hurts. But if you put out boof, people, it's mids, and they say it's mids anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? So I got to try my hardest. Yeah. So. What, what's it like keeping the consumer pleased? Because if they don't realize like how low 
things are yielding sometimes it can be tough for them to appreciate like when you do put it out what's the easiest way for you do you just like find reps that work with people that appreciate the craft the most or do you rely on like the branding with the quality to get people to appreciate what you guys are doing I'm um, probably like a mix of both mm -hmm. you know I've had people all the time like oh man you have stickers it you know it that's so custy and it's just like well and my analogy is is that Ferrari doesn't put their engine in Corvettes and that's because Ferrari is going to give you the whole package, the outside of the car, the seats, and then also the engine. Mm -hmm. It's so an experience. It, it's, a whole, it's a whole package. Yeah. So, and I'm, I mean, don't come for me. I'm not saying that I'm Ferrari. You she know what I mean? She just said she's the Ferrari of dabbing, basically. I mean. I'm just kidding. But yeah. you know Ferrari, I just found out, you, they have like a contract. You're not allowed to mod their cars. Really? Yeah. They make them perfect. Oh. They don't want you to do a thing. Maybe they should go to Ego So Clash. what if we put some, yeah, I was going to say, put that on the side of your Check jar. Yourself. Like, this jar was made perfectly engineered. It needs nothing, no What would you ever coat. think about putting the yield, the 2% or the 1% or on the side of the jar? So we number the jar, like this jar is jar 31 of 44. There's only okay. 44 jars of that So that's one. basically a, a yield counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I it. mean, and then the, this one's jar 29 of 40. These are new stickers, so on the bottom of some of them, like these ones, you're not going to see how many jars there were because I have to have them at a box so I can hand write it in. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's where that's going. Um, I like it. Are there any of these jars that you haven't shown the camera that you want to open up and show the camera? Oh, I can show some red onion. That one smells what do you really think, Darby? Do you think we should end this show with one more surprise? I mean, power-ups are fun. Power-ups are fun. Power-ups are fun. What are we doing? Power-ups are fun. I'm going to do it. Since you guys are doing a laid-back chill episode, I'll be the one that gets a little crazy. We already oh, did the man. slide. <laughs> now we got the rosin roulette wheel. I'll let Darby spin it for me. Thanks, Rosin Evolution. Thank you, Rosin Evo. Where the winners go. Where the winners go. Rosin Evo. Do you guys use Rosin Evo products? We do. Yeah? It's the oh, only look, product we nice. use. It's the only product. And we didn't pay her to say that, guys. Nope. Chat. taking dabs with friends, but hate cleaning your banger the old-fashioned way? Are Q-tips alone just not cutting it? Does burning your leftovers take way too long? Introducing the Banger Basket with all new Tab technology. So simple to use, even you can do it. Simply open your basket, pour in your alcohol, dip your banger, and voila! You're ready for another dab in an instant. Leaving you and all your friends happy, healthy, and ready for your next dab. Get yours today at www.saveyourbanger.com. Miyagi G, haven't done this one for a while. Now, this brings up an interesting point. Some people at the competition table will actually be doing dry dabs. Yes, you yeah. heard that right. No water in the engine, no <laughs> lubrication in the vehicle. Oh. They dry say boys. the water can take away some of the turp profiles. Okay. Some people prefer dry hits. Now, my wheel just landed on Miyagi G, which means I'm going to take one of these turp locks and do a dry hit right here. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think water can steal the turps? And how would you feel if you saw somebody at the competition table taking dry rips of your stuff? You didn't taste test your stuff through dry rigs, did you? Nope. But Maybe I, next time. No, I mean, me too. I mean, but I mean, at the end of the day, I also didn't taste test them through Puffco's and Carta's, and that happens mm. too. I wouldn't do that either. I like this lady. <laughs> All right, without further ado, the last app. Darby, you're welcome to join me if you want. I know you probably do don't it. want to. Yeah, you want to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. You're welcome to join me if you want to. What are we I know dabbing? you probably don't want to. Just a little try taster. How I do you even this. do it? It's a Miyagi G, so it's pretty cool. Th these are the new uh, V2 version. That's the V1 version. So Tricom Tortoise actually put us on these uh, back in like season two, but they're pretty cool. Um, it works the same way as the other rigs do, um, and these have enough weight that we'll be good. Um, 
basically just like this. And we're going to let them cool down to a, a low temp, like 550, you'll be good. We try to do these like hot, but they'll actually burn your you'll, lips. You'll feel the 700. Oh. But if we do these at a nice... Actually, it's a little sticky right here, so it might be some lip. Oh, shit. Right. You here, might take be, this one. Might be some lip on that Boom. one. Let's clean her up. Will you grab me a paper towel? This is a sticky lip. <laughs> No, I'm going to put a slide on mine, Darby. Are you good? Do you need a banger? I'm going to rock a banger. Actually, I think Roz and Evolution should really love me. I really do, because I don't reuse my wash bags. We do Whoa, love you. Whoa, what does that mean? Like, every wash, every harvest, I buy new wash bags. So you're saying you basically wake up every day, like Master Piss P. excellence. Yeah, you put on Damn. a fresh white tee. She's got just a whole closet of white tees and fresh black fresh. Air Force Ones. Pretty much. And every day after Damn. you're done, you throw them in the trash. trash. I mean, my kids <laughs> actually use them to like find shells and, <laughs> and and catch bugs. So, I mean, there's that. Wow, that's a good uh, recyclable use. Tag Ros and Evo and how you reuse your bags when you're done washing with them. There you go. And we'll pick a winner to use or to win a brand new bag set. Brand you can store set. minnows in them when you go fishing in the Great Lakes. Whoa, oh, how many minnows can they hold? Uh, Hundreds. Hundreds of Damn. minnows. So you thought you could hold a lot of hash. Wait till you see how many minnows you can fit inside. <laughs> exactly. Rosin it should Evo, be on their website. Where the fishers go. Where the Whoa. Oh, that's good. This is cinema, guys. I like this it. This is why we come out here. Now we're getting these what these rigs. What we got over there opened up? Oh, yeah. Show the camera what is all this over This is red there. onion. Yeah, the red onion. onion. Yeah. What's the lineage on the red onion? Red velvet to GMO. Red velvet. Oh, yeah. She's GMO. got some punch, huh? She's like a caramelized onion. She's real nice in that sense. It's like a, we always say GMO without the funk. So she's like a nice, sweet caramelized onion. A lot of, we find a lot of gas and yeah, there's other still a ones lot of can, gas in there. can be like a, you know, a little harsh. And I feel like the, the sweetness of the red velvet in there helps, you know, really smooth that dab out. Yeah, and a lot of people love her. A lot of people too. say it's like one of the best ones we got. When we, I think honestly, everyone that you've shown us, I've been a fan of. There's not a bad one in the bunch. Uh, one thing we were talking to the Burley Boys about was they like to choose for the effects. They really like the the heavy hitting strains. They need stuff that has medicinal effects to them. Um, do you have any that personally like help you? Or are you guys kind of flavor first? Like you prefer the taste and the effects kind of come after. No, my like we have an ogre breath that, because uh, my husband enjoys dabbing uh, fruit, but his one of his favorite dabs is ogre breath because of the effect. And his uh, the type of effect that he enjoys is more of like a narcotic, very heavy effect. And it's probably because he's a recovered addict. Um, recovering is 13 years clean now. But uh, that's awesome. So, and is it from using uh, cannabis kind of to ease off like pharmaceuticals? It, it's from federal prison. Oh, okay. That, that that'll get anyone too. clean. That'll remediate. But, uh, but that was a, just a little five-year stint. But no, he has remained clean and everything due to the, he kind of, I mean, hash. In yeah. but, but before that, flour, you know, because he still really enjoyed. He grew up uh, in Morgantown, West Virginia. That's where he went to college at. And that's where he started growing at in his dorm closet nice. so that's awesome that's Organic uh, brian had a skate shop out there nice i wonder if they might have been in town at the same time that would have been crazy if their paths ever crossed yeah we're gonna have to ask him what years they're out there this would be crazy for sure i mean so that's like that's the type of high that he really enjoys and i mean i mean it is what it is on mm -hmm. that one and so red onion gives him that effect strawberry melons and the limes and well, I'm about to red onion it up. Yeah, I mean mm. the red onions is super fire. It's just, it's, it's for him. It's the ogre breath in. For me, I like strawberry melons. I think it's phenomenal. It tastes very fire. good. He thought it tastes like cherry capri suns. What is the ogre breath? Ogre breath is oh, ogre breath okay. is um uh, meat breath to GMO. Is that thug pug? That is actually 808 genetics. Really? Okay. Yep. That's awesome. So you guys are strictly all seeds and you select your own pheno. So no matter how much you like a cut, you're just not willing to take that risk anymore because of the experience that you guys had with the hop latent. Like, do you share cuts at all with anybody? Um, just mom's secret stash. And it really what it is, is I don't want people to be able to try to talk me down on my price because they can go to you and you and, and get the exact same cut. Of course, so literally. you can get the same strain potentially from someone else, but, not but you're pheno. not gonna get my pheno from somebody else. And I mean, and, and it's one of those things of just trying to be like an exclusive small batch brand and not, 
you know, even though I love Superboof, I don't run Superboof. Yeah, I have run crosses where I can find my own pheno, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and it's unique to well, us. It ensures the quality, too, and that people are getting quality. They just know that it's something unique, rare, and specific to you For guys sure. and your brand specifically. For sure. And then, you know, like I said, it can't be like, Oh, you have Skittles for $100 a jar. That's really nice. Oh, you have Skittles for $140 a jar, and yours might be better. But the most people are going to be like, well, they're both Skittles, and they both smell pretty good. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go this cheaper one because they can go to, like, eight different tables and get it. But they're not Dustin. They're not real deal resin. No, that is true. You know what I mean? People definitely play that game where they say sure. they can get it cheaper. And by protecting yourself with your own pheno hunts, there is obviously going to be the sacrifice at first and finding your phenos. But oh, yeah. the reward of finding things that are not just like keeper worthy, but award winning worthy, it is really a gratifying um, feeling, you know? for all the hard work yeah. that goes into it. It's it's a lot of hard work. And when me and Baked Tater are sitting at the table with four or five jars that we're trying to choose from, and about the only time me and my husband ever argue is when we're trying to pick out what to enter. Because you have different tastes? Pro and, like but not only that, um, sometimes I, I call him snakes and sparklers because he is everything is effect for him, even in, in terpenes, you know, but it's like once he likes something, there's no changing his mind that that's not the best one that should be entered. So when you guys you know. sit down and you go through them, do you sit and dab something and then wait like five minutes so you do get the effects of it? Or do you kind of go through quick in a style of like an ego clash where you want to see how they perform bam, bam, bam and see which one sits on More your More so an ego clash style. Yeah. And I'll actually print out a scorecard and I'll get me, Nobu Smoking Chad, my husband, maybe another friend will come over and we'll blindly score these you know entries and then i'll add them all up and i'll see what the consensus was with everybody at the table not knowing that this is fruit gushy and this is this and this is that or this is i usually make 11 blends to, wow. to try to figure out like what i should enter and like how it's you know complimenting on this or that it's so good that you got a team of people you can trust their palate for sure too, you can for just sure like, all right everyone we're having a tasting but not only that sometimes like you know with mom secret stash she's very new to rosin but that insight is very nice because some of these big dogs just send people to go dab their entries. Mm -hmm. They are not, you know, sitting down and doing them themselves. Mm -hmm. And therefore the, the person dabbing them might not be the most, you know, seasoned veteran of, of dabbing and terpene profiles. Yeah, papaya might blow them away because might they Might blow don't them eat. away. Yeah. Papaya's good, shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Are you running papaya? <laughs> I'm, I love papaya, actually. But I'm trying to find a good one because I understand there's a lot of crap out there. There's, there's a lot of papaya crosses, Dude, too. Dude, for like a year or two at Ego Clash, it was fucking insane how many people were like entering papaya or papaya crosses. It's thinking before that it they got their different. Skittles cut. I mean, that, that's how I feel about Skittles at Ego Clash, but I kind of understood in the land of Z, you enter Z. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I've been in this for like seven a year so like z when i got in was what got us into it we were spending more on skittles raws and no exaggeration per month than my rent that's crazy what is that is that is that a torch leaking yeah. oh i thought you're here <laughs> okay <laughs> but it's a bomb. then skittles kind of took a it, there was a couple years where people were trying to hate on Skittles because everybody had it. So, like, no matter if it was fire or not, they would vote it purposely low in the Ego Clash. Like, really? I felt like um, I had had, like, crappy Skittles until I had, honestly, yours. Um, the honey banana, though, too. Do you like honey bee? Um, if it leans more banana. Like sweet, like the sweet candy. Yeah, I don't mind it. That one in Ego Clash, but then immediately people became jaded by it, like, because it won, like, back-to-back -back Ego Clashes and then a Chili mm -hmm. Verde, you know? And then people kind of got the jaded Chili that if Verde. it came through the table, um, they would kind of judge it harsher just because they knew how good the cut was. You know, it, it is, like, when Z's not done right, in my opinion, it's very harsh. It um, diet Z. I take it and it's like razor blades on your too. throat after a little bit. And so, for me, it... It's hard to go through that many Z dabs and some of them really not be that good and it wreck your throat and then, but it's really refreshing when you get to a good one. Mm -hmm. And then for me, then 
I'm scoring that one like way up there because I'm relieved that someone entered a good Z. Kind of makes it, it's you know what I mean? worth it a little bit. And then it's smooth. It yep. Yeah, and it's smooth. So I do think that even when in the land of Z, you can still win and still place and do well if you enter a good one. Yeah, you just have to have something unique like at uh, the Culture Cup, the BPPZ by Electric City Hash Company. Mm -hmm. Just super unique, like something out of left field. It's kind of like... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a, a banana, like plastic electricness, you know? Yeah. Like it has like a rubber banana, but it's like just so different that it like, and it was like almost illuminescent, like how white it was. It, yeah. They won first place. They won. Yeah. And so I remember when that jar came in front of me on my scorecard, I wrote the smoothest, best dab I've taken in a while. And I scored it. <coughs> wait for it a 10 on taste that's crazy and i don't really score tens you're all this is so good damn it yeah <laughs> man i'm definitely gonna lose you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like it's that is one like realization when like when you're at the table you're like because at a ego class for people that don't know there's like 40 jars so everybody's sitting down and you're doing a dab and then you're doing a dab and you're doing mm -hmm. a dab. 40 dabs in like four hours so all these jars are getting passed around and inevitably, you might, if you're not going to be the winner, you're going to hit one that you're like, shit, like, <laughs> yeah. this is fucking fire. Right. This is way better than what Also, I it's weird, like, I've been in a bunch of situations where I'm like, oh, this is my jar. And then I get another one, I'm like, oh, I think this is my jar. Well, that's because you enter Z. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Z or a grape gas. Like, if yeah, you play yeah, the yeah. game where you get these elite cuts and you just believe in your ability to grow it better than the others. 100%. People like I like that perspective. Chris, yeah, yeah, like, Chris will talk shit. I, I didn't hear his speech he gave the other, until, like, the other day about... He literally called out every strain we grow, and he was like, yeah, I'm different. I, I don't just grow Skittles and grape gas and... Uh, <laughs> Bro, you Tell us how you really though. feel. But I think, it, yeah, shout out anybody that Fino hunts and grows cool terps but also being able to grow the other cuts that people have and then do it better than them is yeah. also cool too because elite sure. cuts are elite cuts but everything is only as good as you make it i mean just like life yeah and that's really hey. these jars come down to how well you can grow them it 100%. doesn't matter you can have the best equipment the most expensive washing machine everything all that jazz and it does not matter if you grow mids if it's coming if you're burning your crops and you're not putting in the R&D to find good terps and you're just growing the backseed your buddy found in the 90s, which may, might be fire. Dude, there might be fire. There might be some crazy fire in there. Shout out, what's his name? Beasel from uh, Massachusetts. That guy had like a lemon Beasel or some shit, but it was from like a lemon G bag seed. Nice. Uh, and that's just phenomenal. Like uh, the Ohio G lemon G or the Ohio lemon No, G. a lot of like... You know, cuts that every and well, genetics that we all run now were all backseed because that's kind of how you got yeah, stuff back in the day, it. anyway. Yeah, there was no fucking clone bank or or nursery that was gonna send cuts all over. Or, or now even these tissue culture banks, you know, you can actually yeah. get a tissue tissue culture kind of sent. Yeah, that's but be careful cool. there. In in my research of yeah. that is that it can come back usually within about six months after tissue culture. Oh, really? Yep. If you get something cleaned up. Yeah, that doesn't, it doesn't mean it'll stay clean. Yeah. Once again, that comes down to how good the person was doing the tissue culturing. Mm -hmm. But also, like, it's just it's in the plant sales too. at that point. And I'm just talking about hops in very particular ways. Yeah, hop lane virus is shitty, you know. If you have it, you got to get cleaned up with a tissue culture. And then, like you said, I've even seen parts of plants be affected and other parts not. It happened to us. Yeah. We, there would be a branch that mm -hmm. was affected. Mm -hmm. And we were like, what the hell is going on with that branch? And it was, like, very brittle. So we assumed Crazy. that it meant that maybe it broke off and wasn't getting the nutrient supply the other one was because yeah. we were ignorant to mm -hmm. the topic. We I mean, At the end of the day, he's a great grower, but he was never on, he was just on the forms. Mm -hmm. you, you know, back in the day, that's what everyone was on was Everybody, on the forms. Yeah. You know, so that's. That's what he did, and he, there was no one that he could ask what it was, mm -hmm. you know? That's how it is. So okay. when we went there, he didn't, he'd never seen it before, you know? So he didn't know what the hell was going on. He just thought, I don't know how to grow no more. I was going to say, I bet, I, I forgot to bring it up in the moment, but I bet you guys had that short moment where you're like, damn, now I suck. Like, I just had a... Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, that. and so that's... what did he a, do? Like, compare pictures with people, and they're like, yo, bro, that's Just, like, you. researching, yeah. you know? And actually, I was going to say that that's really... It's really hard being husband and wife and business partners at the same time because when I pick up a jar and I'm like, okay, um, this one's mids. Mm -hmm. I just told my husband that what he did for the last, 
you know, six months or whatever growing that wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And I got to remember that and I got to, you know, maybe be a little bit nicer in my approach mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, there's a person behind it who's growing it. Yep. But I'm just saying that that terpene wasn't good. Not that you weren't good, babe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's a, this separate the, the work from the love, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> like you said, everybody is just as good as their last batch in this mm -hmm. game. And that's why uh, solventless is such an artistry because you work so hard to create something to be enjoyed and then it's gone. It's just gone forever, you know? So only yeah. in that moment, you know, people, hopefully you create a batch that people still talk about, you know? I love it when people pull out jars yeah. from us from like five years ago and love they tag it. us, you know? Because you know you're creating a special moment for that person and that's what we're all trying to do here is create the experience. It's more than just consuming things or trying to numb yourself out. It's more so about being in the moment more so than ever and enjoying the experience, enjoying sure. the fruits of the labor of your friends, loved ones, especially. If you're lucky enough to get small batch stuff like this, it's because somebody cares enough to allow you to have access. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons that we have the two tiers is that I don't want someone, my, my whole thing is I didn't grow up with a lot of money. My mom was a drug addict, my dad was a drug addict. So for me, you know, spending $140 on a jar or 120, 160, whatever it is that you're spending on a jar, um, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So if you crack it open and you're disappointed, I don't want you to ever get a jar from me and then go, I wasted my money. Yeah. Because not everybody's out here like making a bunch. So that jar that they just bought, that's all they have mm -hmm. to get to the next time that they have enough money up to get a next couple more jars. Or whatever, yeah, yeah, right. So I don't want them to be like, man, like I, I, I wasted my money. Mm -hmm. So if, if I open it and I go, this is not worth $120, $140, then I push it to melted solventless because I don't want to piss people off. Yeah. And take advantage of people's money because at yeah. that point, if they're upset with how much they just paid for your jar, they are never buying another one. They're not going to give you another chance. Yeah. Most of the time. People, it takes, well, we just mentioned this last episode, it takes a long time to build a reputation, but only like one bad drop to That's lose it. it, you know? Yep. And especially if people spend a lot of money on a jar and hate it and they have to wait till the next payday and they're just looking at that fucking jar every day after working pissed. all day and they see a jar of terps that they don't want to smoke at the end of the day, yeah. they're getting more pissed by the day. Yeah. So. <laughs> you want them to smoke it too fast and be like, damn, I need to get two next time. Right. I mean, that's always the goal. And I'm not saying that I like meet that mark every single time on every jar but I, damn it, I try. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm a human being. Though. That's I got all we three can kids. Do. You know? right. That's all we can do. And you guys consistently place on the top of all the competitions. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how you guys do in this Masters of Rosin. By the time this airs, people will already uh, no, know yeah. the results. I mean, I, I hope to crack top 10. So far, we've never not cracked top 10 in something that we've entered. And that speaks volumes on the, the consistency and being in the top tier because the the level of quality when it comes to these competitions there used to be like a handful like half the field used to be mids yeah, yeah. and they just wanted to like be there right but now it's like there's only a couple that may not be good and usually they don't even let them enter at this point oh. uh everything in there is fire yeah. so the culture cup second day for me i was like oh my gosh that like was the every, best competition i've ever seen everything was just amazing so to still crack top 10 i felt like honored mm -hmm. you know just like when we got fifth at ego yeah you, you couldn't tell me shit like mm -hmm. for a day or two you might as well thought i got first yeah i know it you does know what feel i mean like, that. Yeah. <laughs> like it's okay you know for me but it was my first year and i'm a new brand and these are my first competitions that well, we're really going to try you know what i mean yeah like, out of nowhere you know i remember when they announced you guys' name i didn't i've never heard of you um up until we beat real point. cannabis chris out in dabadoo boom and he was like he was pissed they who called are a they? recount i heard yeah, he I might call, I heard he How called for a recount. recount. You know, like, you know, like he was, he was like. He outgored the fuck out of that. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, um, who are the baked haters? And I'm just sitting there like. <laughs> Me? That's who it is, buddy. Take a good hard look, Cannabis Chris. He's actually stayed with us last night. <laughs> You don't know what we put in your drink, Cannabis Chris. <laughs> <laughs> He's not showing up for the next month of competition. <laughs> you guys are also going to be competing in the Maui competition. Yep. Uh, this might drop before that gets announced. Um, but we had to send our entries out. We don't know how they got there, but they got there somehow. Yep. And there's going to be another ex pigeons. expert panel out there. Yep. I'll just delete this part. Patreon, you're the only part that saw that. Um, anything else coming up? You guys obviously are probably going to be competing in Ego whenever we 
get details probably yeah, the day can, before the event. Invite, if we get invited, we'll be there. I'm hopeful we'll actually be there for Melt this year. How do you guys prepare for something like that? Because I'm lucky enough to like be close enough that like if we get the call, we'll just go drive. You guys have to like make a flight plan. Like, do you do you hit? <laughs> Brandon up to try to say, hey, should we make plans or do you have to book a last minute okay. flight? What's that like for people out of state? I've never asked this. <laughs> so what I did last year was I t-shirt sponsored because I wanted to go to Little Lake Valley's food drive, um, not food drive, toy drive, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I met him out at Breeders Ball in Michigan and we just like, you know, hit it off and I wanted to go out there and hang out with him, Chemo and a couple other guys. And so, and I wanted to take jars and vend, and we were going to, like, share a booth. So I was like, well, if I can T-shirt sponsor, then I get a ticket to go regardless. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went ahead and I T-shirt sponsored. It was, like, only 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, okay, I, I secured my ticket to go, and I can go vend and network and get my brand out there because I didn't think I'd get invited. Mm -hmm. Right? And then he invited me, and, hell, I was already there. Mm -hmm. You know? So at that point... That's how I've pre-planned things. So like for going out to Spain, I'm already, I'm just gonna go out there and compete in my mind in Dabadu, you know, maybe Masters of Rosin, Organic Cup. And if I get invited to Ego, I'm already out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a that's, good way to approach it. That's how I do it. But like if we get invited to Ego this year, uh, I'm probably not gonna t-shirt, I'm not gonna sponsor this year just because I have so many other events that I'm mm -hmm. doing. So it'll be a last second. Happens fast. It'll be, a, yeah, yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, me and my husband are a great team. So he'll stay home and take care of the kid, the dog, the lizards in the garden, mm -hmm. and I'll fly out by myself and, and just go. Get go that win. entry in, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, let's, it, we're still trying to build a brand and get our name out there, and that means, you know, sacrificing. He doesn't necessarily like uh, peopling, mm -hmm. so I will be the one that just flies out there and goes and does it because he's not going to talk. Yeah. You know. He'll jump in the pool for a carb cap by yep. Zach Brown Glass. In his undies. Yeah, <laughs> I saw he that. He stripped down to his undies in Barcelona. That's the first time I ever met your husband. Yeah, and he like, splashed you. Yeah, yeah, he splashed the fuck out of me, but it was a hot day, so it was actually refreshing. I mean, oh, at the funny. end of the day, that's what he thought. <laughs> he was like, well, I can jump in the pool. Mm -hmm. I get a thing. He floated around on a raw cone for a little bit. And you remember them. And it was yeah. all good. It was all good. It was a yeah. good memory. We created some awesome content for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of awesome content, this has been a great episode. You have a dab loaded up. Did you want to finish that on, on air? Or? I, I oh, did you do the dry dab yet? No. I already did mine. Did I you do did one? mine, yeah. Yeah, okay, you never I'll, passed I'll do, the torch. I'll back. do another one with you. Here you go. All right, so this is the last dab of the show. And as we take our last dab of the show, I usually ask, is there anything else we need to know? Where are you going to be? What are you going to be doing? Where can people find you? What's the new pheno hunts? Woo! Is there any crosses that you got like going right now that you're excited I for? I mean, honestly, you kind of inspired me on some on some Z. Um, and so I I joined the Bloom Seed like uh, solventless syndicate thing. Bloom is awesome. And bought a bunch of like too much Z crossing crosses. I got that too. Um, the, like the banana pi yeah, papaya. The black maple TMZ, all that. All of them. I bought so many of them. It's you're on point. So we're I, gonna uh, come back here in a year, and we're gonna be fucking checking out this shit. And we're gonna be like, yep, she did it, folks. Yeah, I mean, squad. that's the thing is like, I'm just trying to find the next best thing. So with my staple strains, I'll get rid of something if I find something that's better. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, you know, it doesn't mean it'll always be so around. So do you mean if it's better in the sense that it's similar but better, so you'll get yeah, rid like of it? Yeah, like how it improves on it. Like let's say if it's like a, something that leans gas and funk and, and I find, find a something, better, yeah. a better gas mm -hmm. and funk. And so then I'll just replace it because at the end of the day, small batch. I don't What's have unlimited. What's your ideal stable look like? How many genetics? I would like to keep like around maybe 15 or 20. That's nice. Like, I mean, like I said, my last drop was 18 flavors. That's I just awesome. want people to have a um a, a nice variety of of stuff i mean that's how I, that's how i like to smoke i've been you know i've hit the death by boof i'm about to hit the melon parfait i hit burley's panic hmm. um i love the burley's panic so i i just i just like a variety uh but yeah i bought a bunch of different z cut uh not cut seeds and uh candy fumes and just some different things like that candy fumes is awesome too yeah i mean i'm, I'm super stoked for them Candy fumes is really cool, actually. Yeah, I got I got some papaya candy fumes. I got I got the hive, which was like the honey banana. I remember um, seeing that. I never grew that one, oh. but we grew candy fumes, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, 
I just got all those same seeds that you're talking about. We haven't popped those yet, but Sam and myself has been doing Z pheno hunts for like three years, and then we just did like a sour and a uh, gas pheno for like the last two years. So now our stable is beautiful with just so many Z crosses. I didn't take that as um as low as I wanted. You take it hot? Did it burn your lips? Did you get sticky lips? Not really. I did. Well, I'm not a badass. Mine I, came through. I took it rough. hot as fuck. Tasted good though. You know, I honestly don't mind the dry dab. Not bad, right? No, People it's not it bad. For a reason. Like, it's not like I'm not over here coughing or anything crazy. Smooth, right? Yeah. D2T, as long as it's the right D2T. It's a dab. Dab to temp. Oh, so ratio. It's not necessarily the temperature, it's the size to ratio. Oh, okay. Like never the seen someone dab zone. too big of a one gram or too hot of a one gram dab. <laughs> That's Darby's slogan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. <laughs> it is true. So, good luck to you at Masters of Raws. And by this, you by too. the time this airs, we'll know who won. Uh, Maui, good luck to you there. Ego Thank Clash, you. good luck to you there. Um, Hash for, Angeles. Hash Angeles. Hash Vegas in Los Angeles, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. And it, I thought it was supposed to be January. I guess it's February 10th now. Yeah. That's the day after the Super Bowl. So, yeah. Uh, no one's going to be hungover. Uh, for anybody that wants the merch, where well, you're getting a ton of comments, can you tell everybody where to get your merch, how to stay up to date with you guys? Um, Mrs. Baketator4 on Instagram, and the merch is at thebaketators.com. And this will get added when I get back. I was just wanted to see how it went. I got it done. Um, Bloodshed did the artwork on this, That's which I know sick. he's done artwork for Darby Holmes. Oh, I was gonna say, Darby, you're using yeah, this you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, he did the artwork on this on this particular one, and on the back it says, "Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. Don't mids it up." And that's awesome. So that's what the it. back of the hoodies say. Don't mids it up. I love the transparency between your brand. You're not afraid to say if it's mids or not, and that's how you know you can trust the drawers when you see it. This is a person that cares about their craft. The husband and wife duo. The Tater Squad, holding it down for all of Michigan from the upper mitten, the pinky, all the way to your home. If you see the jars, take advantage because they don't pop up often at all. At all. And when they do pop up, they're always fire. Um, thank you, thank Roz you. and Evo. Thank you, Dr. Darby. Thank you, Mrs. Big Taters, for joining us. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Patreon, you're the best. <laughs> Roz and Evo, where the winners go. <laughs> see ya.